Hey kids, welcome back. Uh, I'm glad that you're here with me again today. I always love seeing my grandchildren, even though it's all virtual. Uh, but uh, talking to you when I get that opportunity. And once again, to do this in posterity for you uh, with the chaplains and clergy of the revolution that I hope you will be encouraged by uh, these great men of God who helped make America what it is. So let's get on with chapter 40. And uh, the reverend's name is John Hurst. We're going to be talking about his patriotism and a sermon to the soldiers. Here we go. John Hurst was chaplain to the 4th, 5th, 6th battalions of the Virginia troops that served in New Jersey in 1777. Now, he was a fearless man and an ardent patriot. While no one more faithfully discharged his ministerial duties than he, no incidents of his life have come to my knowledge that require a particular notice. The character of the man, however, and the manner in which he performed the duties of chaplain may be gathered from the following extracts from a sermon preached by him to the Virginia Battalions, April 20th, 1777. The sermon is dedicated to General Stevens. The dedicatory note closing with the following pithy sentence, quote, For after all the definitions of patriotism that ever was or ever will be given, this is the quintessence of it. The opposing ourselves foremost in the field of battle against the enemies of our country. End quote. He took for his text Psalm 137, 5 6. Quote, if I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. Reflections upon past enjoyments tend only to the aggravation of present sufferings. And yet I know not how the mind of man is ever found fondly disposed to draw the painful parallel betwixt the happiness he once possessed and the misery he now feels. This was true of the captive Israelites, as is pathetically described in the psalm before us. Quote, By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. End quote. As the soul in affliction is ever apt to dwell upon any circumstance which heightens the sorrow, he here represents the harp, that sacred instrument devoted to his God, now laid aside, silent and neglected. For how indeed could he sing to the Lord's song in a strange land? Oppression and servitude throw a damp upon every noble faculty. No wonder, then, the sacred musician could ill exert the heavenly harmony under this dispiriting pressure of a foreign tyranny. Quote, How shall we sing the Lord's song? End quote. Here the faithful patriot turns by a very natural transition from lamenting over his country's faith to the strongest professions of preserving his affections forever inviolate toward her. Quote, if I forget her, may my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. End quote. Starting from this point, his discourse eloquently of the love of country as acknowledged and honored in all past times among the Romans and the obligations each one is under to act for his country and of the motives that prompt him to it and then say, quote, 
let us change the scene and take a cursory view of our own case. Thanks and praise be to the Lord God of armies. It is our felicity not to be members of such a society, not to be in so abject and humiliating a state as those Roman colonies were. We have never yet been conquered. We never yet tamely received laws from a tyrant, nor never will while the cause of religion, the cause of nature and nature's God cry aloud, or even whisper resistance to an oppressor's excreted power. The gloomy cloud that has long been gathering and hovering over Jerusalem is indeed still formidable and demands our utmost exertions to effect its dispersion, and this great and wished-for good is, in all human probability, the most likely to be accomplished by firmness, unanimity, preservance, and a fixed determination strenuously to execute and defend what our Continental Congress, provincial assemblies, and commanding officers, and so forth, shall wisely and prudently resolve, quote, let fools for modes of government contest that which is best administered is best, end quote. He then describes like kind of liberty for which they are contending. It is not, he says, licentiousness, nor a war of conquest, but a struggle for their rights, the very liberty England always contended for and which has made her glorious. His sermons were always well adapted to inspire the soldiers who listened to them with the deepest attention. A good man and an earnest patriot, he, with the thousand other clergymen of the land, presented a noble front in the cause of freedom and helped to swell the lofty enthusiasm that seven long years of toil and suffering could not quench. Wow, kids, that's pretty interesting. And, you know, sadly, if you go to what I also sent out to your folks in relationship to some of the programs that I did on the Samuel Adams channel, is that in our age here in 2022, 70 plus percent of pastors are no longer thought very well of, are not thought as somebody that they could, you know, be trusted. And sadly, that's, you know, true for you. And I know that your parents are really trying to find uh, a churches that hold to the foundational truths and pastors that would hold to the foundational truths as this pastor here, and that you need to follow through and seek the truth and to understand what John Hurst is talking about. And as Mr. Sedley concludes, the thousand, with a thousand other pastors and clergy, that was a good majority of the pastors and clergy of the day during the revolution. Let's pray that we have that return to the foundational truths and that pastors would return to those Reformation biblical truths so that you and others will have a place to worship that understands the liberty given in Christ and that there is liberty for all and we have our rights given from God. So, Look forward to the next chapter as we get closer to the end of the book here in chapter, what, 41, will be William McKay Tennant. William Tennant, one of the great pastors that really worked hard for the gospel at the time. So we'll get to William Tennant uh, the next time we get together. All right.